Hey everyone, it's Dr. Romani. Welcome back to this YouTube channel. And we're gonna talk about resilience, but we're gonna talk about effed up resilience. So there's really no other way for me to say it. And I am afraid that since I'm not some dude gamer type YouTube channel, if I keep dropping F-bombs, YouTube's not gonna like it. So I'm just gonna say effing and it's probably not professional for me to actually say the word, okay? What am I talking about? So I was talking to a long-term survivor of multiple narcissistic relationships. These relationships span from childhood into adulthood, narcissistic grandparents, parents, and then a long-term marriage with a malignant narcissistic person. The person who I was talking to, extremely nice, easy to get along with, pleasant person, and very resilient. She has been having to solve problems that probably she shouldn't have had to have solve on a very, at, since, since a very young age. She was kicked out of the nest the minute she graduated high school, that kind of thing. Very smart, lovely, lovely person. She's also really, really adaptable. And it led me to think, and then I started thinking about another person I knew in a similar situation I was also talking to a few weeks ago. Narcissistic mother, narcissistic long-term marriage, narcissistic adult child. Again, extraordinarily nice, very pleasant, and as empathic and compassionate as they come. And ridiculously adaptable and resilient. Honestly, probably the most flexible human being I've ever known. Then as I thought about those two people, I rushed to my computer like a crazed detective. I pulled up my clinical files. It's almost like I already knew the answer, but I wanted to see how the data would show up. And in the vast majority of clients I've worked with who were survivors, long-term survivors of narcissistic abuse with childhood narcissistic exposure, then adult narcissistic expo exposure, not all, but most, okay, not all, but definitely most, I'd say 85, 90% plus were nice, pleasant, empathic, and above all else were extremely adaptable, resilient, and flexible. In that most recent conversation I had with the survivor of multiple narcissistic relationships, I was reflecting on how difficult her life had been since her divorce from a malignant narcissistic person. It was horrific, terrible post-separation abuse, and she got financially pretty wrecked by him, no big surprise, but she just kept trying to make her life work. When she encounters difficult people in the months and years since then, she makes it work. When things require a workaround, she makes it work. It's not always easy, but she makes it work. And she always has. She had no choice. Almost none of the people she'd encountered, significant people, since she was a child, none of them would have helped her. And as a kid, she didn't know what narcissism was. And she didn't even know what narcissism was for most of her marriage. So she kept trying to change herself, adapt herself to be better for the marriage, to be better, to do more, just like most people who go through narcissistic abuse. And then she learned about narcissism. And in her case, she got out. Listen, some people stick out the relationships. I mean, in her case, she got out. But it dawned on me that she is so resilient, like really, really resilient. Most of these folks who go through this are, but as I talked to her, I said, this is really effed up resilience. Because to this day, she and most of these folks who survived these relationships were still having to create workarounds, often for a lifetime. Because the people, the close people to them who were supposed to be supports, who were supposed to help, to guide, to be present, such as parents should have been, never were. So they had to figure it all out. Everything from applying to school, to doing homework, to tending their broken hearts, to dealing with play, play yard bullies, even having to take care of the parent or the parent's needs when they were children. And then as adults, finding themselves often having to appease a fragile narcissistic spouse or partner or family member, sacrificing things that matter to them, doing more and more and striving to be enough for the narcissistic person. So maybe the marriage or relationship could work out. It meant that they were as adaptable, flexible, and resilient as anyone I had ever met. But it was really effed up resilience. A need to have to learn to do every single thing in their lives alone because help was almost never coming. To be able to turn on a dime at the last minute and be flexible because the narcissistic people in their lives often pulled the rug out from underneath them. To learn emotional regulation skills that were literally out of this world because every day was a disappointment. 
they learned to never have the good things that happened to them ever celebrated because the narcissistic people around them would typically ignore, mock, dismiss, or devalue anything good that happened to them. But yet they still kept on keeping on, I guess, and striving and doing their best. These folks also learned that the people who were close to them, partners, parents, family members, would not soothe them at times of pain. So they did their best to cultivate other supports, perhaps seek out therapy. They figured it all out. Listen, I'm a shrink. I'm the first one that's going to tell you resilience is great. It's associated with a whole bunch of great outcomes, better health and mental health outcomes. It's associated with success, with better overall functioning. Resilience is about flexibility. It is efficacy. It's problem solving abilities. It's a stress management tool. It's a stress management approach. It is about not getting stuck in just one way of doing things, but being able to pivot to taking a new route, taking on a new routine, quickly packing up and starting again. Resilient people rally. They often uplift and encourage other people. Resilient folks are the people you want at your side when you walk through the gates of hell. Not everyone who goes through adversity develops resilience. Some folks don't have it. Some folks don't cultivate it. And those folks will struggle for a lifetime after they experience adversity. I'll tell you one little hack. If you're ever hiring for a job, hire the resilient person. Resilient people tend to be agreeable and have persistence and grit. As a side note, listen, not all survivors of narcissistic abuse are resilient. Many, if not most are, but a subset may actually find that the mental health struggles that are a product of the chronic emotional abuse overwhelm them and undercut resilience. Whether or not someone develops resilience often relates to a lot of things like how severe, cons consistent, and inescapable the narcissistic abuse is, whether other traumas were happening, um, or whether this elevated to the level of relational trauma, other mental health issues that may be co-occurring, and the presence of how, mu how much support a person has. How, do they have resources? Do they have supports? Some of that can have to do with their resilience, and a lot of it probably comes down to temperament. But the resilience a human being has to develop as a result of chronic narcissistic abuse is effed up. You basically have to learn to chronically appease another person, always have a plan B, C, D, E, and F, live in a constant state of disappointment. It's resilience with a huge side helping of grief. When I work with survivors, I have to remind them how resilient they are. But when they reflect, they don't even think of themselves as resilient, but when they reflect on why they are so resilient, it can bring up some really painful feelings, which is understandable. Effed up resilience can sometimes feel less like resilience and more like endurance. The way a resilient person can figure it out, you know, a resilient person can figure it out if they don't get food for eight hours while they're traveling, right? It's similar. Effed up resilience means you're able to just stand up in the face of toxic people and keep on keeping on. I know a gal who had a narcissistic dad, kind of a narcissistic mom, a narcissistic partner, and is surrounded by narcissistic friends. She is resilient and kind and flexible. And her endurance for the toxic BS of the people around her is prodigious. It's actually kind of painful to watch. Survivors should not have had to become so resilient, right? They may have been equally resilient, even if they didn't have lots of narcissistic in their relationships. But resilience, in a way, at some level, while it can be cultivated, a lot of it is a trait. Effed up resilience is a combination of resilience and trauma response and a survival skill set that will occur, again, alongside that trait of resilience. It can feel different than regular garden variety resilience. Listen, children are not in a position to make sense of narcissistic behavior. And most people are not taught this. So even as that child comes up into adulthood, they may not recognize that their flexibility and amenability and adaptability are part and parcel of the resilience that came out of the workarounds and the tolerance of disappointment that narcissistic abuse requires. However, in a strange way, the resilience, this thing that is so good for us, becomes a risk factor. 
because the resilience means that when we keep encountering narcissistic people in adulthood, well, we are flexible, right? We may be more likely to make excuses or give second chances or forgive. We may almost reflexively just do the workaround, drive 100 miles out of our way, do what needs to be done because we're resilient. We may not think twice about the flexibility and the adaptations we're making for toxic people. So the very thing, the resilience that is protective and good for us may actually make things more difficult in narcissistic relationships, unless we understand narcissism. Because that effed up resilience can end up being one of the gifts that you take out of the narcissistic relationship. It can become a flexibility that allows you to pursue goals and dreams in a gritty and persistent way. It can allow you to be a great friend to healthy people who are hopefully also flexible and agreeable. Once the narcissistic folks in your life are largely disengaged from, it can contribute to your health and well-being to have this prodigious level of, of resilience. It can also help you manage stress. So if you could take that resilience, know who the toxic folks are, be flexible in your life, but give yourself permission to disengage from those toxic folks. Resilience isn't about enduring other people's toxicity just because you're able to. It's about being discerning and giving yourself permission to disengage and being flexible in a way that isn't about appeasing and giving into them, but about being more stress resistant. So this effed up resilience, right, which so many people who've gone through narcissistic abuse have, this ability to just really roll with those punches and keep getting up and rolling and getting knocked down and keep getting up, it's something that I've really, really seen quite frequently in a large proportion of survivors of narcissistic abuse. And what I do see, especially with the people who get out of a narcissistic relationship, an option I know is not available to, any, not to everyone, but when they get out, the resilience stays around, but they're not working around the narcissistic person in the same way anymore. And they're really, there's an adaptability. It's unlike anything I've ever seen in other people. And really, like I said, these are the people you want to travel with and do things with because there's a real ease to them. They're like, okay, sure, we can do, we can do it that way or I can do it that way or I'm, I'm easy. And they really can make it work. The counterweight to this is that effed up resilience can mean that it can sometimes be difficult to, to make your needs and wants known because you're so used to going with the flow. And part of the process of healing is giving yourself permission to sometimes say, yeah, no, I don't want to go to that restaurant. I don't eat that kind of food. Like to have, find some of that voice because the effed up resilience can often mean that you're so flexible that you don't make those needs and wants known. So it's definitely an evolution. But when we think about this, this effed up resilience that so many survivors have, there's in the, in the midst of that is a real gift you can pull out and make your own because it's, it's a wonderful, wonderful quality to have, especially as you get older. But let's just get the effed up part out of it so you don't spend your life appeasing or don't run the risk of letting more narcissistic people into your life. Thanks again.